I saw something on uh, <clears throat> on Twitter that TickPick is reporting that they've sold six times more Final Four tickets, the yes. women's Final I'll Four, solve that. than the men's Final I'll Four. I was thinking about earlier this year, uh, Ryan Rucco, mm -hmm. who I you know work with, of course, who's calling uh, South Carolina LSU, mm -hmm. had better ratings on a Thursday night versus a Miami Heat, Boston Celtics, TNT mm -hmm. game. It feels like uh, there's a surge in popularity right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. even more so for the men's, you know, than the men's game. Than the men's the, the, game. The yeah. women's basketball, whether it's WNBA, but particularly, yeah, yeah. particularly women's college. college. Yeah, yeah, Why yeah. do you think that is? I think I think there's obviously there's a lot of factors that goes into to, to we're theorizing yeah, yeah. here by the way yeah we're theorizing we're just theorizing but I personally think that there's two things obviously the obvious one to me is the transfer portal I think there's too many guys that are leaving colleges leaving programs and it's just hard to keep up with a lot of guys you know so if I'm a if, if I'm a kid that goes to the, you know, if I'm a fan and I my team is, is Connecticut or or Baylor or, you know, Duke or North Carolina and the kids are now, you know, they're leaving one year in or two years in, in a transfer portal, you know, you're like, your pop, you know, your, 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 your fandom of that particular player on your favorite program, it automatically dwindles, it goes down. So I think that that has something to do with as far as the popularity and 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 the excitement of why you may want to watch the the women's uh, college game more than the men's. But I also think the number one thing is in in women's sports compared to the men, we have the ability to go to the NBA right after our freshman year. In the women's game, you have the ability to build your legacy and build your and build your, your your rapport and brand with that fan base, with that community. Caitlin Clark, I mean, back in the day when it was like Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird, Samika Holescloth, you know, Candace Parker, you know, you're watching these girls, they're doing it, Kelsey Plum at Washington. You, you're watching these girls year after year after year continue to grow. You watch it. You watch any girl, I mean, there's not much going on in Connecticut besides the Huskies. Mm. So when you get a, 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 a popular basketball player, which is the most popular sport in the world, I'm gonna stick by it. I know football fans will rebuke my comment, but I believe that. But you get a, a, a woman to stay on campus three, four years, I think that has a lot to do with the popularity of their sport. It gets to something Rich Paul said to me. He was talking about NBA players and the scrutiny that uh, the great ones face now in the social media area, era. But he said to me, there are, are no more icons. Yeah. And when I think about men's college basketball, there are no more icons. And I think the two yeah. reasons you mentioned, one and done, transfer portal, are a big part of that. We'll go down the list. Since the one and done era, look, listen to this shit. Yeah. This is some of the names of women's college basketball players. And a lot of these players have won the Wooden Award. Candace Parker, and some of them have won it more than once. Yeah. Maya Moore, Brittany Griner, yeah. Brianna Stewart, Asia Wilson, Aaliyah Boston, Sabrina, Sabrina Unescu, Kelsey Plum, Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, yeah. Juju Watkins, who's at USC. Yeah. That's just to name a few. Yeah. And I, I feel like that, as much as I love the team aspect of basketball, period, I think the women's game right now, particularly in college, has more icons. Yeah, I mean, when I was growing up watching college basketball on Big Monday, you had Allen Iverson at Georgetown, you had Kerry Kittles at Villanova, you had Ray Allen, Ray Allen. At, at Connecticut, yeah, yeah. you had uh, uh, John Wallace at Syracuse. These are all on Big Mondays. You know, there's no more. You, was, you spent four years at Duke. There's no more J.J. Reddick's or Shane ba Shane Battier came back. He came back when he was already, he's going to be a lottery. He came back for his senior year. He's like, I'm coming back. Like, th those are the icons that we're talking about. Those are the college icons that you, that you watched. Yeah, you watched because you had a love for, you know, that program. But you also watched because they had certain icons or certain uniforms. Like, you know, I used to watch North Carolina back in the day. 
Ed Coda, but he didn't sniff the NBA. But the he was but so you knew who he I was. fucking loved Ed yeah. Coda in college. Yeah. I love Ed Coda, Shaman Williams, that that team that they had. You know what I'm saying? Like I love Cincinnati. You know what? What uh, uh, Logan and Ruben Patterson. You know, and Kenyon Martin, all those guys. When, and then when Kenny Satterfield stepped in, Demar Johnson, it was like, I don't know. Where, it it kind of like, I remember as a kid watching that. Like, I, want, I wanted to, when I was growing up, I wanted to go to Cincinnati because of the uniforms and because of how, because of hugs. And then I got a little older and I wanted to go to North Carolina because of the uniforms and because, you know, Ed Coda and his ability to pass the ball. Like, I was like, oh, that's insane. Like, like you, you never want to go to Duke. Fuck no, man. <laughs> Fuck no, I never wanted to grow up and go to Duke. I already told you this. <laughs> my, my, my son. Now, yes. Now, my, yeah, now, 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 yes. now that you know K. Now, now that, that I know you know K, K is my fucking guy. Yes, my, my, so, my sophomore year, uh, they started recruiting me right at the end of this, the, the high school season. And so they, my season ends, and they say, you can come to senior night. It's yeah. Chris Carowell's senior night. It was against Carolina. I go, this is, I mean, I'm a Duke fan. Right. I'm a dream come true. Right. So I go and um, had a great time. Duke wins. You know, I meet Kay for the first time, spend some time with Wojo. Wojo takes me around campus yeah. or whatever. Like a month and a half later, I'm at the first uh, big Nike AAU tournament, which was Boo Williams. Yeah. We hosted the first tournament in Virginia. And we get to the championship game, and I'm sitting with my teammates. You know how you used to wear shorts underneath your shorts? Of course. <laughs> you wore shorts underneath your shorts. Of that course. particular day, I had decided to wear some Carolina shorts. So all I want to do in life is go to Duke, but I, I like the Carolina blue color. So I'm rocking these Carolina blue shorts, and who fucking walks up okay, and sits so next to me? No, Wojo does. Oh, He's like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? I was like, there goes my chance. trying to kill everything. There goes my chance. Uh... Real quick, I just want to wrap this up, but like Cameron Brink, who uh, star player for, for Stanford, mm -hmm. she said a, she had a quote, she said, I keep seeing videos of people saying, I can name five women's basketball players in college, but not men. That's so funny and such a crazy shift. I, I want to say overall, the women's game, we have legends still playing mm -hmm. and a bunch of future stars. The game is in such a good place. Mm -hmm. I want to make one last point because I always think about time and progress, right? Mm -hmm. uh, First time there was men's basketball in the Olympics was 1936. First time there was women's basketball was 1976. The NBA started in 1951. It was the NBL before that in 1946. Mm -hmm. WNBA was founded in 1996. The first women's nationally televised game was 1979. Think about that. It was the AIAW. Mm. They were going against uh, Larry Bird and Magic, mm. right? NCAA tournament for women didn't start till 1982. Think about the NBA, mm -hmm. right? Still on tape delay yep. in the 1980s. Finals games, playoff games. It's just time and progress. That's it. It's inevitable. Mm -hmm. It's inevitable. These players are so talented. It's only going to get better. It's only going to get better. So this surge we're seeing, it's the trend. It's the trend. It is the trend. And I'm all for it because I love the sport, men or women. I love it. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching Mind the Game podcast. If you like it, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you.